So guys, just a quick introduction. So thanks for coming. Um, hopefully you can see George on your screen. Can you see George? Thumbs up if you can, please. So you can see George, you can hear me. Pratty, just say hello. Hello. Can you hear him as well? Thumbs up, brilliant. Okay, so the way this will work is, um, I was just telling George, we did actually have, Tim Thornton was gonna do the sort of interview um, who works for Sky Sports News, he's a good friend of mine, but unfortunately he's, he's in Newcastle covering the 320 billion pound takeover of uh, Newcastle United. So he, he sort of felt that was a little bit more important, but um, so you've got me instead. Um, I actually know George pretty well. I've known him a long time. I've known his family as well from, from UFCA. So I'm sure it'll be all right, George. I might not be very good, but I'm sure you'll, you'll help me through it. Um, so just a little introduction about George for those who don't know him. Um, he, he joined USA, I think it was under 10s, um, came to us, so he's 18 now, so seven, eight years ago, um, joined us, um, made a really good impression from the start, just a great kid, great attitude, um, you know, came along to work hard. I think at the time, Pratty, I'm probably right in saying that you weren't necessarily the best player at the time, as in no. you, were, you were a good player, but not necessarily the best in that group. Um, no, no, no. I actually remember having a conversation with him when you were sort of 10, 11 about you know, how, how you felt it was a strong group and how determined you were to sort of, you know, improve as well. So that, that was always a good sign of your sort of mentality. But yeah, George joined us around that time. Um, was always a good player, but we had a strong group and, and, and sort of fairly quickly really sort of developed and progressed into one of the stronger players as well. Um, in terms of his personality, very, very committed, very dedicated. Barely ever missed a session, George, I don't think. Um, twice a week with us. I think twice a week we had grassroots club and then played pretty much every Saturday for us and, and Sundays as well. So really, really committed, dedicated player as, as a lot of you boys are that I'm looking at now. Um, and yeah, the journey for George was really, he came to us, did his grassroots stuff, um, really worked hard at what he was doing. Played for us in the Selby League for a couple of years, George, so in Rothwell Town and things like that because we had a little link with them. And then once the JPL kicked in, you, you, you were sort of a, a regular in that really, traveling all around the north of England with us and, and, and further at times. Um, and then around, I think it was the under 15 season, um, George, we went and played Blackburn. And obviously you you had a really good game, uh, made a really good impression. And, and really, as they say, the rest is history from that point on, but you went in on trial and, and we fairly quickly offered a, offered a contract at the back end of your under 15 season. And then George then, he went and did the under-16 season, but still kept in touch with us, still did sessions with us, still tried to keep himself active. Um, and then at some point during the under-16 season was, was offered a two-year scholarship, which George is now in his second year of. So for you boys who maybe don't understand the system, when you get to 16 and leave school, if you get offered a contract by a pro club, it's generally a two-year scholarship. And then within that two years, you, you're then trying to sort of um, earn your, your way for a professional contract, so to speak. But, but George will talk a little bit more about that. So that's basically George's journey. So he's a, he's a UFCA legend, we call him, um, not just because he's a Blackburn now, but, but really because of how he applied himself and how, and how he committed to the, to the process. And, and I know looking at a lot of you boys on here that you've got the same sort of, um, same sort of ambitions, really, same sort of goals. So I'm going to crack on with my interview. I'm going to try my best to make it as good as possible. So George, I've got a few questions, obviously, do your best to answer them as best you can. Yeah. Anything you're not sure about, just, just let me know. So I think really what, what the boys on here probably want to know, George, is what, what, what it's like as a, in terms of a typical day as a, as a professional or full-time footballer. You know, what, what, what does your day look like, really? Yeah, it's just uh, basically mirrored by the first team. So you'll come down early, 7.45 for us. We'll have our breakfast. After that, you have a sort of a break do your own thing, sort of get prepared for the day, do your prehab, and then we go straight into gym. We'll do a session around 10 o'clock. After that, we'll eat, have an hour or two off after the session. We'll probably go into the gym again, stretch, things like that, do our prehab, make sure our bodies are right. And then we'll go out for another session, which will just be technical, won't be hard, just sort of... Um, like getting the basics correct, making sure they're on point. And then after that, we'll eat tea and then it's just sort of relax. We'll go up to where we live. We call it digs. And we'll go up there, just relax, make sure we stay hydrated and just have a laugh, laugh around there, be ready for the next day. So in terms of that 7.45 start, is that 
if you're not there for 7.45, what's the uh, what's the punishment? Is there any? Oh, it's a fine. Fine and a punishment if you're not there. On time's late. If you're there at 7.45, you're late. Do you get any uh, do you get any second chances, George? No. No. So that's 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 a little lesson for everyone looking here who, who, who when your parents talk about being on time for things, that, that's how it works at, at the top of any industry. Um, you know, if you're told to be somewhere for 7.45, I'm sure, George, you're probably there a little bit earlier than 7.5, so I'm sure. 7.40, 7.40 okay. every day. There you go. So it's, it's the mentality of them kind of things that's key. In terms of the training, obviously, um, training twice a day on the pitch and then, and then having the gym work. What, what are the, what's the intensity like in the, um, on the pitch sessions? Is that a high? Are they, are they controlled? Um, obviously, sometimes it's controlled. Um, like we have high loads. We do, a, we do a lot of distance covered through the week, but mostly it's all match tempo, everything straight at it. And then it's normally in the second sessions in the afternoon where it's controlled, sort of like low reps, but that inten- intensity is still the same. And in terms of your gym sessions, is that, are you left to yourself or have you got, have you got an S&C coach that guides everybody and, and helps you with that? Yeah, we've got an um, S&C coach. And then um, our top physio helps with it as well. So we'll have a, a day, normally on a Monday, we'll do uppers. And obviously, you'll always have your core and your jumps involved. So we'll do uppers on a Monday. Tuesday, which is our hard day, we'll have a lowers. And then on a Thursday, power, which is your cleaning or your jumping and like your speed work. But regardless of that, every single session, our SNC does either linear speed which is straight line sprinting or agility, just different movement patterns with us. This is every day. Yeah. And people for me who like sort of, I'm a bigger lad, center half, struggle with it. Instead of sometimes doing the technical sessions, I'll break off with him and do my own agility sessions. So it's like, I'd get, I'd benefit more from that than doing the technical sometimes. Yeah. So probably a question that might be relevant then probably is in terms of the gym work, obviously a lot of the boys here are, you know, obviously younger than you. Yeah. Um, what, when when did you start doing gym work as a footballer? Was it before? Did you start before you signed for Blackburn? Was it just during? Um, I mean, I went while I were at UFCA, but that was just sort of like um, core work, mainly for my speed and agility, just relevant to that. But it wasn't until I was 16, I'd have probably started anyway then yeah. when I came in with Blackburn, like it came very regular three times a week. So it's probably something that lads think about is, you know, uh, we get this question a lot, people want to be stronger, they want to be fitter and all that, and that's and we understand that, but I think it's key not to not to get into that too early, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I think yeah. probably something for everyone to understand is that George's dad is um you know, he's, he's got military experience, he's 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 always been very, very fit and understands what he's doing and very, very, very sort of um, controlled in what he's doing so it's not something to maybe start too early but it is something maybe to start educating yourself on um, in, in terms of when you signed for Blackburn George probably more when you went as a scholar what, what was the thing that maybe stood out to you or maybe surprised you about that kind of environment um, professional standards actually the standards everywhere you go for us we're not allowed on our phones things like that we're not allowed to walk around with like slippers sliders slippers with no socks on, like when you're late, it's punishment, fines, training. If your boots are dirty, fine. Everything's a punishment. It's always held like to the highest standard. So it, like you look, it's more professionalism, to call it. Like you look professional. Uh-huh. And is the reason for no sliders, is that so you don't get ahead of yourself too early? Yeah. Thinking you've made it too soon. Yeah, it's like they say, so with us, as you progress as a pro, you don't have to wear shin pads. And like you can wear your GPS over your top, and like that's one thing that we say like don't get ahead of yourself too early. So you yeah. still always have to wear those shin pads and the GPS underneath, just yeah, so there's like that barrier between you. That's interesting because sometimes people get into that mental state of thinking wearing sliders and wearing the Beats by Dre's and things like that. It's, mm-hmm. it's almost like you think you're there before you've got there. So uh, you know that's 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 an interesting way of of, of doing that. Um, what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned up to now? from Blackburn or being at Blackburn that's, that's sort of important for you? Um, like, again, I'd say probably my standards, again, 
everything you do has got to be regimented because it does leak onto the pitch. Yeah. Like for me, if you don't do your hydration, your sleep, your recovery, and things like that, you get away with it for a couple of months. But after that, people creep up and they start catching. Yeah. And then they end up taking over you and bypassing you. So, would you say that regardless of what happens in your football career, you've probably learned things that are going to help you for life, just in general, just organizing yeah, yeah. yourself and things like that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, so a lot of life skills. Um, so, here's a question for you to, to maybe big us, big us up a little bit. Uh, UFCA so I, I mean you know without putting too much pressure on you how would you say being at UFCA before you went in a Blackburn sort of maybe helped you if it did well it's it's all the same the tra- like the training's the same I think obviously don't get me wrong the quality at a professional club where I'm at is obviously better and the intensity is better but it's all the same like the process and all the same with you we are standards I remember when when people used to turn up late like they were a punishment for it, weren't they? Sometimes didn't train, things yeah. like that. It's all the same. And I, like, I think even introducing, like, when we always used to play professional clubs, I think that were a big thing. Like, the insight of that for me, I used to look at them and think I want to be like them, take things from them and then go out and work on it. That was me personally. Yeah, that's, that's interesting you say that because one of my points I wanted to speak to you about is I remember, in general, you know, you and your dad never really sort of... Um, never really came to me with any problems. And I, I think the first time you came to me with something, it wasn't really a problem, it was just a discussion was, I think we had a few lads getting trials at clubs. And I think you you felt like you were good enough and maybe felt a little bit disheartened by that. And I don't know if you remember that conversation, George, when we... No, I do, in the office. I yeah, I don't know. So in terms of the other lads here, because we've got some older lads that we think are very good, but maybe haven't had a chance yet. You know, what, what would you say to them in terms of, you know, not losing patience too soon that's all all I can say it's just patience so like the likes of like Sam Deacon everyone were going to the professional clubs and even to the start like um, when people like were going to different places other than UFC here I think you've just got to stay grounded and realise where you are is good and it's right for you the standards are correct and just to keep going at it if it's your dream everyone gets knocked down but it's just the way you get back up yeah, I think my message to you boys would be, um, let me just, someone else adding in, is, uh, is listen, it, it doesn't always end up like George's story. And, and George is still, he's still not finished on his journey either. And, and he might have a few bumps in the road, I'm sure he will, you know, and, and that's part of everyone's journey. But um, it might not happen. But if it is your ambition and it is your dream, you've just got to give it all you've got. And like George said, he had a moment where he doubted himself or, or you know, a bit disillusioned by it. And, and even though he was, a, he was a full team player was George, but still maybe, not jealousy, but maybe a little bit of envy to the no, boys getting a chance. Yeah. Not, not wrong with being jealous. No. And it was just, a, it was probably some of that actually, when we had a chat, I think it spurred you on, George. I don't know what you think. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so that's probably something for you boys, just to, just to sort of, especially the older ones on the, on the call, just to probably, you know, if it hasn't happened yet, it might not. But if it is your ambition, you might as well give it all you've got. And, and, and that's what UFCA do. We hopefully help you with that. Um, as a player, George, what would you say your biggest strength is? I think it's ball playing. Ball playing centre half. Left oh, yeah. foot. <laughs> Left foot. I think I can play playing through the lines, I'd say. Decision making on the ball. Communication. I'd put up there now. I've developed a lot of that since I've come, come in full time. I think communication. I'm quite, but I want, yeah, I'm a leader. I sort of not boss people around, but I help people, encourage them. I think I do that well. Those two, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. From and I haven't really seen you play for a couple of years live, but, but that's how I remember you as well. Um, in terms of the ball playing stuff at Blackburn, do you have a set way of playing, or are you totally free when you put the ball at your feet? Are you allowed to play long or is it short? I think it's you've got to mix it up, aren't you? You've got to. It's all about game understanding. You've got to realise what the game needs. So you sort of have, you you do have free reins when you're on the ball, but they encourage you always play out. Always play out, unless we're really under the cosh. And sometimes you do need to squeeze up, but most of the time, always play out, even against the best of teams, always play out. Is that is that instilled in the entire club, even in the first team, or is that just as you progress into that level? 
Uh, it's, I think I, I think it's all the way up. Obviously, you get more game management as you go up, don't you, to first team. But all the way to 23s, it's more or less religious play out. What's the what's the is it? Is there, a, is there a focus on results at 18s and 23s or, or is it is it just about performance or is it a bit of both? I think obviously it is a bit of both, but it's more about performance and development, In it? You've got to develop. It sort of only really matters when you get to the end of under 23s and first team that results come into play because that's when that's when jobs are like sacrificed from that. It's yeah. all about how you develop. Good stuff, good stuff. Um so a question from me, probably, George, just so I can see how you're doing is, in terms of your targets, I, I've had a good chat with you a few times and I don't know what, what your sort of long-term target is, but have you set yourself targets? And if so, what's your next target now? Yeah, um, obviously my next target is to get the professional contract. But my current target, you know, I want to run the games with the under-23s. I've started three times and fourth is going to be tomorrow. But my target at the start of the season was six. I have six starts with under 23s. That was my target for this season. So for the boys who aren't sure, George is a second year scholar officially. So he's not yet got a professional contract, even though he's full time and he does get paid. Your next contract is your first professional deal. And, and obviously a big part of that is trying to get in the under 23s. So for, for an 18, you've just turned 18, aren't you, George? For an 18 year old to be playing under 23s at a Cat One Academy is, is, is a big. Is a big, big, big deal. Um, so yeah, that's that's good. So obviously, your, your target is the ultimate target, the pro deal. But you've got the mini targets that you think will help you achieve that, i.e., playing twenty threes football. Yeah, 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 good stuff. Um, what? So I don't know if I've already asked this, but I'll say it again. What advice would you give to any of these lads that have got them same ambitions that you had when you were 13, 14, 15? I think the biggest thing for me again was just the patience. You've just got to trust the process and know if you if you are at it all the time and keep your standards high in training and out of training, like your opportunities will come. But when the opportunities come, you've got to take them with both hands and sort of run at it. I think, um, like, as I said earlier on the call, your determination was the big thing that stood out. But I only really saw you when you were with us. In terms of when you went away from UFCA, you know, did you... But did you go out with your friends? Did you lead a normal life? Did you did you stay in and focus fully on just football, or you know how did that look for you, George? Well, do you want me just to give my like my old plan, like yeah, yeah, you've got I mean, So obviously the Monday I would train with my grassroots, so and then Tuesday I'd be with you, Harty, yeah, and then Wednesday I used to have a speed and agility session, like with um like a PT, and then Thursday. I used to train Thursday with my day off, actually. I used to have a day off, and that's when I used to go out with my mates. And then Friday, in with you, Hearty. Saturday, trip, well, play on a Saturday with you. And then Sunday, I'd be with my grassroots. And that's where it'd be. But so, even sometimes on the Thursday, the Thursday, as I got older, under 15s, I went to the gym but on the Thursday. So a lot, a lot of people, parents and Everyone gets a little bit worried with overworking and burnout and things like that. Would you say that was an issue for you ever doing all that? I mean, obviously, it does get frustrating because you don't see the outcomes you want to see. But, like, looking back on it now, like, it was the best thing I did. Sort of my dad were a massive thing on that. Yeah. It's like always keeping my head down and keeping me motivated. So it definitely helped me the most. I'm going to, to, to touch on your dad because obviously I've got to know him pretty well and, and I'd like to think we've sort of become friends if you like, but I think that yeah. the big thing with him was, from my perception, he wasn't overly intense with you in terms of putting extra pressure on you, but but in terms of, let's say you had, a, you know, you didn't have many bad games, but let's say you had an off game. How did he deal with situations like that? Was he, was he, did, he did he talk to you about it? Did he give you advice or did he have high, you know, certain expectations? No, he didn't have any expectations for me. The big one for him were always my attitude. So if my attitude wasn't in the right in the game, if I weren't affecting things, because I think the things that you that you can't affect, so like you running, you always can you can control how much you run and how much you try. But sometimes on the ball, it's not your best days, is it? So I think it's always you just always expected me to run, always. Mm -hmm. but then. It just talk to me about the games and like just to say where I can get better. But it were a conversation. He wasn't talking at me. It, it was like we'd just have a, a conversation about it. 
yeah, I think I, I, that's that's what I got from your dad. That I think he knew that you were good. I think he knew that you had lots of potential, but I don't think at any point he ever applied any extra pressure to that. So I think, but yeah. for you young lads watching, you know, I think most of you have got that kind of relationship with your parents where it's a support system and, and hopefully they encourage you. And I think the key message from George there is the same message I give to my two. It's, I only expect them to give 100% and have a good attitude. And as long as they do that, if they're not quite having a, an amazing game or anything like that, I'm okay with that. And that's probably the same ranks with all the UFCA kids. As long as they're giving 100%, you know, that for us is, 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 is the main thing we should look for. Um, so yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I think your dad's played a big part, George, in terms of just the overall support system. And just before you guys came on, George was telling me that he was on the bench for the under twenty threes against Chelsea, and his dad was going to come down. What time was kick off, George? Twelve. <laughs> his dad was going to go to watch the game, even though he knew George probably wasn't going to get on the pitch. And I just think, obviously, there's a lot of our, a lot of your parents that do the same thing and, and, and things. And I know my mum would have would have done something like that as well. So I think that support system with the parents is brilliant. A couple more questions from me, George, and then I'll, I'll see if any of the kids have got anything. Yeah, um, we've probably just touched one of them, actually. It was about how important your family has been, but if you want to just you know, quickly say how, how important your, your dad in particular has done more than I've seen, but I'm sure your mum's you know, and your sister has played a big part in that as well. You know, what would you say about that? Yeah, my mum were always... She always wanted to come watch me play football, but obviously my sister at the age where we sort of couldn't leave her at the house by herself, so she was just sort of at home. But then my dad, anywhere I went, just came with me. Always when I when I didn't wasn't feeling up for it, he'd always try and motivate me and just to keep going. And I just think him in particular is like for where I am today, it's it's all in, really. The way he was with me, it's just all in. Parents get a lot of a lot of tough times and, and some parents yeah. deserve it, and some parents don't, you know, <laughs> some some push the boundaries. But I think most uh, I think I think you know, parents in general, that support, if you've got that support system, I think you'll know now as you get older, you look back and say you wouldn't be where you were if it wasn't for, you know, your dad and, and your parents sort of giving yeah. them chances, really. 100%. Yeah. Um, right, let me see. Last one. No, I'm good. I've, 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 I've asked all my questions, really. So yeah. hopefully that was okay. Is there any uh, any of you, you you lot on the call that would like to ask George a question now? Because probably now is as good a time as any. Um, maybe just put your put your thumb up or you just let me know somehow. Unmute yourself and fire away. Rocco. So, what? Who do you think's the toughest striker you've faced this season? This season. Good question. Um, well, there'll, be, there'll be some good ones that the lads won't know of, George. So you know, right. maybe in two years they will. Yeah. Um. May I'll give you one last season actually, because you might know him. It's called Joe Hugo. He just signed for Man United. He's oh been, yeah. Yeah, he's been at bench for him a few times. 100% him, the best yeah. player. Yeah, I, I, I could tell you a story about that, Rocco. I, I paid for Man United TV to watch that game. <laughs> and then I forgot to cancel my subscription and I, and I kept paying Man United about seven quid a month for, for a year. <laughs> so it cost me some money there, George. <laughs> uh, there was a couple came through. So Sam and Harry Ritchie. Sam, do you want to ask that question? Want to mute yourself and ask it? Uh, what was the first team you played for? Echoes of, Echoes of Fisheries, I think they were called. <laughs> Literally around the corner from me, just on a the field. There's a little team just on the Saturday who used to get together and play. That really wasn't really. We used to play against anyone. We'd just all meet together and just have a massive training session. That was it. George is a Bradford lad, born and bred, which the amount of times we played against Bradford and Hull and, and Rotherham and things like that. And, and George ended up signing for a Cat One Academy and some of these clubs that, you know, they couldn't see what was right in front of them. But yeah, it's Bradford. We give him stick about being Bradford born and bred, but he's a good lad. He's doing all right. Oh, Ranks. Ranks has got a question for you. Oh, no. Go on, Ranksy. Pratty, what's the best goal you scored for UFCA? Uh, I think you know the I think you know the answer. <laughs> Go on. T TNS, 100%. 
halfway line, took on a player, stinked it over at keeper from halfway line. I never saw you take on a player. What are you on about? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was the best one. Think to him. See that, Ranks? Was I not there? You was, yeah, you was there. One of them long days where we're all we're all shattered yeah. by the end. Yeah, yeah. We'll be playing TNS again shortly, hopefully. Um, anyone else? Any other questions, boys? Zane, what was your was favorite there? academy team? Oh, sorry, who was that? Was that Jeremiah? What was your favorite academy team? Um, what do you mean by that? The favorite team I've played for, or uh, yeah, what's your favorite team you played for that UFC? At UFC, yeah. It's got to be UFC, yeah. It's yeah. got to be UFC, yeah. Only, only UFC, yeah, Jeremiah, didn't he? So Rassi was a very UFC, loyal, yeah. very loyal. He could have gone somewhat, he could have gone many other places, but he knew he knew he was in the right place, I think, George. Definitely. Definitely. There you go, Jeremiah. Zane, do you, got, you got a question, Zane? What training did you do to get even faster? Um, Sprint drills, high repetitive sprints. So a lot, a lot of sprints on my form, because I... I was all over the place, the way I run, with my balance. Just sorting my balance and my car out. That helped me get faster. So that's in interesting, George, because we're starting to put in some of um, them elements into our programme on a Monday evening, which is starting very soon. So we, we've sort of seen that that's something that maybe we can provide and, and, and assist the players with, because I think you'll testify, as you get older, the physical side of the games, not just being strong, but agility, balance, and, you know, obviously when you did play against Joe Hugo, the one thing I took was he was tall, but seemed very quick and agile. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a big thing. Rocco, you got another one, Rocco? Of course you have. Uh, who is, who, who, uh, well, who's the toughest team you've played this season and how did they really play with the play style on that? Um, I haven't played... Oh, I'd probably say Tottenham, actually. Yeah. Tottenham under 23s. They're pressed. Pressed a lot. They always played out. Every time you're on the ball, always in your face. Think you have any time to breathe. That was 100% the best team I've played. What was the score in that one, Pratty? 3 3. 3 3. Jeremiah's a big Tottenham fan. Penalty. Got a penalty, didn't I? Won it. Did you? I won a <laughs> pen, yeah. Did you play a full game? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Jack Clark played, didn't he? The Le ex Leeds player. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Zane, have you got another question or is that just still up? Okay. Right, it's okay. Still up. All right, no problem, Zane. So, yeah, George, listen, um, I think I think we've gone through, let me just check the chat. I think that's questions from the kids. I think we've touched, gone over a lot there, George. I think, listen, without embarrassing you, I think from my point of view and ranks as well, that we've known you a long time, I think the fact you can come on at 18 years old and do this the way you've done it, I think is a testament to, to you and the way you are and your character. And I think it's brilliant for the boys that are on now and the ones who will see this interview, just sort of, you know, how important it is that you've got the right morals and standards and work ethic. I think if I could tell anyone anything about George, we call him Pratty, um, his work ethic, his dedication, his commitment is... I've not seen anyone really like that. And I'm not saying that's none of you are like that. I'm just saying over the 10 years of UFCA, he's the one that stood out to me as being very, very determined and very committed to the to the process. And I think my message to you, George, is, and we had this chat briefly and Ranks, Ranks knows better than me. You're in a great position now, but keep working. It's not, it's not over. And even if you get that first pro contract, that's the, just the next thing. Go again, go again, go again. And if you really want to achieve it, George, you know where we are, where we support you. You know the kids here, the UFCA kids are looking up to you as well. And uh, everyone wants you to just uh, go and nail it. So I think I'm speaking on behalf of everyone at UFCA, Patsy. We're really proud of you. And obviously we'll keep we'll keep in touch. And, uh, you know, good luck in your game tomorrow. Who are you playing tomorrow? Uh, Borough. Middlesbrough 23s. Lewis Harding, are you still on here? Lewis is a big Middlesbrough fan. <laughs> so uh, let us know how you get on. Boys, do you want to unmute yourselves and give... You give George a massive thank you and a bye. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks thank a lot. You.